What's up, Foot Clan? We got a jam-packed, awesome episode for you today. We're going to get you ready for the weekend, all the starts and sits you need, breaking down those matchups, getting into the news, taking care of those injury problems that you got. Do not miss a minute. Make sure you like and subscribe. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Episode 1501. Yeah, that's that's pretty disappointing. (laughs) Friday episode of the show, the Fantasy Footballers with you, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. We ship Kyle back to Atlanta. But Deucer's Alley, still full. You can't empty it out. They're like uh, cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> cockroaches, that's right. Uh, we have a jam-packed episode for you today. As as little recap of last night's game as possible. We uh, promise you that. That is our uh, commitment to you. There's only one thing. Uh, only one. Right. Say it, Mike. It's Foreman time, baby. Okay. Woo! All right. I was. I don't. I don't know what I thought when. Like I know a lot of our listeners have Deontay Foreman that yeah. aren't Mike, and for them, I was very happy. For Mike, I was devastated. Yeah. I didn't want it to work out. <laughs> No. I mean, literally, like, 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 there was nothing to It wa- almost did not. There, there was one offensive touchdown in the ballgame. Mm-hmm. Foreman. It was Deontay Foreman. There was a blue t- injury moment, which oh was. Oh, my goodness. Uh, also Foreman. Deontay Foreman. There, and yet. And game. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really very seriously hard to watch. Uh, I would say that DJ Moore was was fine. This is kind of what you hope for, which is and Cole Komet was fine. Yes, Cole Komet and DJ Moore were fine. Nine targets for DJ Moore, seven for Cole Komet. But they they you know when you end five for you know fifty eight, five for forty five. That's like this great. They didn't goose me, but I move on and I'm super unhappy. You were you were not happy if you started Chuba Hubbard. Uh, you were. I guess you were okay in PPR with Adam Thielen because he had 10 targets, caught six passes. What are you guys? Yeah, yeah I, look. I'm wearing out. There was nothing, you know, it, there was nothing he could do. I'm so sleepy. Br- he likes the voice way too much. Well, the problem was it was a night game. Have you thought about that? <laughs> it was past my bedtime. That's what I'm saying. Like, he wants to be in bed by six. And he's like, I, I got to stay up too late. <laughs> Give me morning games. It was gross. Bryce Young is too skittish in the pocket, can't throw it downfield. The, the the team doesn't do him any favors. I don't understand. Like, in my opinion, and it was made clear last night by losing to the Bears 16-13, I think the Panthers will 100% have the number one pick. Like, that is – I think you can almost lock it away. I've looked at their schedule. I don't think they win another game. Arizona's going to win at least another game. So the Bears have the number one pick. No, the Bears have uh, – the Bears are three – oh, yeah. So the Bears <laughs> oh, yeah. have the number one pick. Yeah. Whoops. Which then – Wow, I, they helped themselves last night in yes. more than one way. Yeah, the, they, they they did the right thing for, for the process. Not that they weren't trying to win, um, which I don't think we want to jump into it right now. But if the Panthers have the uh, number one overall pick, which means the Bears do – it turns into a real discussion on Justin Fields. There's no discussion. Yeah, it you won't, move on. It, it you won't move be a on. They will. Okay. They will move on. Uh, keep in mind the Bears also got DJ Moore in that deal, and Darnell Wright, and uh, Tyreek Stevenson, and the 2024 first round pick, and the 2024 fourth round pick from the Eagles, and a 2025 second round pick. Uh, but but the Panthers got Bryce Young. So look, that's it's the cost cool. of doing business when you think there's a franchise quarterback on the board. And I, I look, I'm not, I'm not willing to say like Bryce isn't going to develop. I think he can develop. I, I do. I, I'm worried. And the the general manager, have you seen the comments about Bryce Young from the from their uh, leadership talking about not needing wide receivers? Have you seen these comments? 
No. no. So before the draft or oh, when they drafted goodness. Bryce Young, they basically said, like, look, this guy is so accurate, and he picks his spots, and he distributes the ball around. He literally said, he said, we don't need to spend money at the wide receiver position. But you did. Because, no, they didn't really. I mean, they, they yes, Adam Thielen got paid a little bit of money, but they had cleared out their wide receiver room. They're, they've gone with, you know, Terrace Marshall and Jonathan Mingo and, uh, you know, Thielen is not the headliner. But the, the, the whole philosophy of like, hey, we can save money there because of Bryce Young is what he said. And we can save money over here because of Bryce Young. That's not You're going to need to spend a little bit of money to get this boy some weapons and some protection. Out, you, see, that's the bigger one to me. Is I think in the pocket, and the stats bore it out last night, like in the pocket, Bryce Young is fine. But when he's on the move... There is no pocket. Yeah, there is no there pocket. There is no pocket. There, so that's the, bigger, that's the bigger problem. Yeah, I mean, they make bad pass rushes look like superstar defenses. This, I, I mean, to be fair to Bryce Young, who I, I, I've already said, I'm very pessimistic. I don't think it's going to work out. I, I I I do not believe that it's too young to be definitive, but for his defense, I mean, that guy has the defensive line in his face in two seconds. I think the Bears had ten sacks on the year, and they had four last night. So, uh, who develops into a better quarterback? This is thrown out by Al Borland. You might know him. Okay, uh, Bryce Young or Jordan Love? Who ends up the better quarterback? Bryce Young. Bryce Young. Bryce okay. Young will have all the time. Sorry, Packers. <laughs> not what I wanted to hear. Folks. <laughs> and and it's more of a. Who's going to get the real opportunity? Like Jordan Love, if there is a chance for the Packers to move on next year, they might take it. Bryce Young is the quarterback for the Panthers for the foreseeable future. I think Jordan Love's a better quarterback today. Yeah. I, I do believe that. that. Yeah. Uh, jointhefoot.com. Had a new Footcast episode yesterday. You get a bonus episode every week if you become a supporter of the show. Huge shout out to everybody that put together Show 1500 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our writing staff, all the contributions that they have made. And uh, to the producers who the, they plotted getting the Borgogan into town for the show in such a way that was um, way over the top. Like we are not unnecessary. We are way more aloof than you think we are. They're changing time zones <laughs> and slack and putting him in a closet on Zoom. Yeah, it was miserable for him. I mean, he was locked away. Yeah, you could have just like probably sat him in one of those chairs and yeah. I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, just put a mask on him and we'll be like, oh, hey, Brooks. <laughs> yeah. We have a ton of matchups today. We have the fantasy uh, face-off and the Wheel of Shame, and I am oh, apparently yeah. the loser. Yeah. So, uh, you know, looking forward to that. I'd hate if there was a power outage and the show ended early, but you can find us on the artist formerly known as Twitter at the FF Ballers, at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. And um, it was fun. Yesterday's show was a lot of fun. All right. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every week on Friday, we take a moment to give away $100, uh, a gift card to fantasychamps.com, to a supporter of the show at jointhefoot.com. Today's winner is DD711. Oh, he's open. Sweetie DD. <laughs> DD711, $100. Congratulations. Thank you for supporting the show. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, let's uh, go through this. Josh Downs still didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. It's the, uh, it's the Germany game. Yeah, that, that makes it, to me, seem less likely he's going to play. There's going to be extra travel involved. If he's not practicing on Thursday, they're going to need to fly early. Uh, TBD, but expect to be without him. I discovered a new cardio champion, by the way. Uh, I think maybe the cardio champion of the season. What? This is a player that plays 100% of snaps, and you would be shocked to find that out. And his name? Alec Pierce. <laughs> Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce is playing that much? Uh, yeah, because I went and looked at the waiver wire and I sorted by snap percentage, something yeah. I, I do from time to time. Interesting. And there's Alec Pierce playing basically every snap of the game in every game that he plays. Did Could you have ever imagined that? No. no. If yeah. I had told you Alec Pierce had been injured all year, would you have believed that was a possibility? <laughs> yeah, 32 targets on the season right now, 17 total receptions. That has to feel so bad. 
I mean, like, he is how just do you, running down the field. 94% of all offensive snaps for the played year, for right? The year, yeah. That's insane. I know you're a pro and you're getting paid. You're getting paid pretty well. But your dream was to be a football player and help your team win. And if you're out there every snap and you know you you know you're never going to get the ball. And we said it has to feel so bad. <laughs> we said that they're the only team to score 20 plus points in every game of the season and he's like, "Why am I here?" Hey. Hey. I'll bet he's an excellent blocker. Well, he's lost. I mean, it's all part of the machine of of getting Michael Pittman open. <laughs> so, he I, is I mean, he's helping the team, but I actually oof, think he's oof. a good player, so but maybe I'm wrong cuz 10% target per route run. Yeah, uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Higgins not expected to play. Now labeled week to week. Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Let's uh, if he's week to week, let's rule him out. Yeah, it it, it is like, good news. Get get on top of this. If there's if someone is week to week, they aren't playing. Also, he's not even ruled out this week. Oh no, he's not. A, <laughs> he's definitely not a practice today. Yeah, he's not going to play, but he will be ruled out eventually in time to make a waiver claim. Not today, but by Sunday. Yeah, it's really good news because it's very difficult to sit a player like T. Higgins with that name, with that draft capital in your fantasy drafts when he's active, and you shouldn't. We did bring up uh, a couple weeks ago how like. We should probably change the fundamental parameters of our IR to allow for doubtful players to be put on mm -hmm. because it's not like, you know, you can't manipulate that system, right? Like if that player goes from doubtful to uh, probable or active to actually use them, you'd have to drop somebody and, mm -hmm. and it would maybe help prevent this issue where the teams don't declare a player out till really late in the week. Uh, something to think about for your leagues. We haven't done it yet, but I, it makes sense to me. It, uh, I don't think it would help very much right now because he is listed as questionable. Correct. Yeah, I mean, uh, can I convince you to let me put a questionable <laughs> player? On no, my I'll IR? do a T. Higgins only. T. Higgins is always <laughs> eligible for IR. Jamar Chase returned to a limited practice. Uh, hopefully, we'll see him out there. I think we do. Uh, Damian Pierce didn't practice again, so no Wednesday, no Thursday. Nico Collins, no Wednesday, no Thursday. Oof. And uh, did you say earlier today? Did I catch that Robert Woods is back? Yeah, I, I thought I, you said that, but I, I didn't. I thought Robert Woods was back and practicing. Am I incorrect? In Kyle, that? you need to dig into that for a minute. Um, yeah, if Nico's gone. Thursday's practice, this is of 22 hours ago uh, from Aaron Wilson. Thursday practice, there's video including Blake Cashman, Laramie Tunsil, and Robert Woods. Okay. Well, so well, he's at least practicing. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that he'll play, it, but. It's worth noting more for Noah Brown because I think yeah. Noah Brown is a probably a must start. Or not a must start, but a flex worthy play alongside Tank Dell. And um he was, he might still be if Nico missed the game, but Damian Pierce, I don't think he's gonna play. So it's Cincinnati. Both teams are banged up. Devin Singletary, I went and looked at those numbers last week. Yeah. That's some Alec Pierce type of stuff. Yeah. Very minimal production on almost every snap. Cincinnati's defense pretty good. I it's tough to not play a player that you know is gonna be their starter. Why can't we get some like Deonta Foreman style action out of Singletary? Uh, they're not playing the Panthers. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> limited practice for KJ Osborne could be back for the Vikings. TJ Hawkinson limited with the ribs, uh, but he will play. That's his plan. And good news here, considering he was the start of the week, but Drake London returned to a full practice on Thursday. The groin ah. feeling good. Ah, <laughs> ah, my groin. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. ah, my groin feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Debo practiced in full. He's marked as healthy. Same with David Montgomery practiced in full. We should see Debo and David and Drake all back out there. Yeah. Kill, the killer Ds. Uh, Debo Samuel, I don't know if you realize this, but the three-game losing streak for the San Francisco 49ers coincides exactly with his absence. He played 15% of the games three, 15 percent of the snaps three games ago. They've scored 17 points in three straight games after basically averaging 30 plus points with him. So this is a this is a big deal for me. I, I think Brock Purdy is a much better play this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the funny thing is is when you look at the situation for Brock Purdy and how we evaluate him as a quarterback, and you take away like he has Ayuk and Kittle and McCaffrey and Debo. And when he has those guys, he's very good. And then you took one away, and we're, like, criticizing him. Again, Bryce Young has Adam Thielen, Chuba Hubbard, and Jonathan Mingo. So let's just, like, 
keep Ter- that in mind. Terrace Marshall. Like, let's be honest. How good would C.J. Stroud be in Carolina right now? He'd be he'd be better than he'd, Bryce, but he wouldn't be that good. He'd be struggling. Yeah. Uh, that was – and I was – man, as a Cardinal fan, I was like, man, I wish that Carolina took Stroud. And oh, he, And yeah. Houston took Bryce Young because our pick would be a lot better. Whoops. <laughs> uh, Ken Walker, full practice on Thursday. Tyler Lockett, back at practice. Jackson Smith and Jigba, back at practice. Are we – Ken Walker is. I don't even know what to do with Ken Walker. Uh, you play him. Yeah, you play him. He, he, you're talking about. You're at the perspective of. You don't have Ken Walker, and we have. I in my Dino League. Look, it's Dynasty, so I'm probably playing him. But the past two weeks, this is the game we have played of missing practice, being limited in practice. Oh no, he's full and he's ready to go, and then he gets no snaps and no carries. I will say this: players like Ken Walker, who were top tier top five options at the position to begin the year are the most difficult to navigate for fantasy players at all because you you kind of it's like you put them on mount rushmore Mm -hmm. and then like it's a lot of work it's in stone man it's a lot of work to change that face man like you have to (laughs) and so then you don't want to gotta hire a crew no i mean architects scaffolding (laughs) all that stuff and it's tough because you you don't want to put them on the bench and miss the week where they're the top five guy again so they're kind of locked into your lineup. Yeah, and and, and they what, probably should be. They, he should be absolutely. It, it would take something special to be able to bench him. You're yeah. not benching him for Devin Singletary or Ezekiel Elliott, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those were two two names that are worthy of bringing up there. Um, but if you had benched him for Deonta Foreman, you would have been happy. Sure. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com/slash/insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, show 1500, we covered the Colts, Patriots, Texans, Bengals, Saints, Vikings, Packers, Steelers, Titans, Buccaneers. It's hard for me to see the the Patriots name there and not think about the Bill Belichick video that is circling right now. Oh, there's a Bill I video? Am, I am unaware. Oh, please share. Is no one in this office aware of this video? I don't know of one. There's just, I, I mean, it's really not good content for the show. But, <laughs> but like uh, Mc, McAfee was talking about it, it there's this like, <laughs> there's this ring, there's this ring doorbell video of Belichick that got out for some reason. Oh, I'm looking at it. <laughs> oh oh yes. no. Oh yes. And like they don't know if this is like a Belichick walk of shame video. Because he, like, leaves this house with no shirt on. <laughs> okay. And we don't think it's his house. It's just it's just kind of funny because this is, this is Bill Belichick. So oh, we, don't, we don't know for sure. But, okay. um, well, if you want to see Bill Belichick without a shirt on. Yeah, it's just, it was a, it was a it. funny conversation. It was worth a listen. Huh. Um, Bill's just doing it. I mean, because, you know, Bill, longtime girlfriend, they broke up. So he's probably oh. he's playing the playing the field. Hey. <laughs> All right. He's, okay. he's he also looks like pretty good for seventy. I would say he's seventy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he could uh, he could still play some linebacker or something. All right, the Forty ers five and three take on the six and two Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm sorry I brought that up. Just, <laughs> I apologize. Nobody needs to see that. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line: San Francisco minus three. The over-under is 45 points. Uh, Jacksonville, five straight victories. San Francisco, three straight losses. Games in Jacksonville. Uh, Brock Purdy, I think it's going to be pretty good. I agree. He's my start of the week. Would you start him or Trevor Lawrence in the same game? Uh, Geno Smith, yeah. <laughs> uh I I had no, I, would, traded, I would start. Uh, I had Geno Smith, and I made a trade with Andy this yeah, morning yeah, to acquire yeah, Brock Purdy yeah. to start over him while Jalen Hurts is on by. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So the these joke. are where the jokes are coming from. But uh, Trevor Lawrence is the obviously much higher touted, higher drafted, both in NFL and in fantasy circles. My answer is Purdy. I, I agree completely. I mean, if you look at this winning streak for Jacksonville, they've been playing really, really, really good football the highest he's been is quarterback 10 but the majority of times uh during that stretch Trevor Lawrence has been the quarterback 16 16 17 he is not 
he hasn't broken 20 fantasy points a single time this season. He is not a fantasy star right now. Travis Etienne gets all the touchdowns. I do think the quarterback position, Mike, is pretty much the only thing worth discussing because you start all of your studs in this matchup on both sides. It's a nice over-under. It's two offenses that can move the ball. Um, I know Ridley's been hot and cold. That's just... Start him. Start him. The yeah. 49ers are a surprisingly great matchup for opposing wide receivers. They've given up a ton of points. Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, both absolutely start them. Agreed. And, yeah, all your all your core players, uh, including the tight ends, Evan Ingram, George Kittle, Mike, uh, everyone's I, in? I have no disagreements. My only note, as I've kind of been making the last few weeks, Zay Jones was limited in practice. If you have a space to, to just put him on your bench and see what happens, I think it's a smart move. Cleveland's 5-3. and three. The Baltimore Ravens are 7-2. and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus 6.5 at home. The over-under is 38 points. Uh, you know, that's a big line. That is. Uh, but it's going to come true, I think. I, I don't, you know, I don't have the confidence. Look, Deshaun Watson, if you watched the film last week, outstanding on deep balls. Like, a lot of them. A lot of downfield throws. Like, I watched every one of them. Everyone was accurate. Every downfield throw. Yeah, it was it, very nice. It was, it was great. How were the, uh, the underneath? intermediate and underneath throws? I don't know. It's like noodle arm. It, 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 it's like you he used the left hand on all the underneath throws, and he threw right-handed downfield. It makes no sense. It, uh, it's something with the shoulder when he's throwing a, a – you know, when he's not, like, giving it everything he's got. I mean, those throws were just awful. Mike made the point that his feet are a problem right now, and I agree with that. Like, mm, yeah. his downfield throws by necessity, right, to throw the ball f far – he he planted his feet and made accurate throws down the field. Everything underneath is like a little bit scrambly, you know, like he's running left, running right, and those balls look bad. So yeah, I'm not a quarterback coach by any means, but I, I mean, I've been around the game long enough that your feet, ha like your passing, starts with your foundation. And my hunch is that Deshaun Watson has been able to get away with some bad mechanics, just over the course of his career and right now with his injury he cannot yeah and, maybe if the arm's not strong enough exactly yeah and and let's not sell this short mike is a championship winning coaching head coaching. coach yes uh for Mul multiple, multiple for his uh children so <laughs> so big time which i yell at my quarterback all the time think about your feet and it's because uh, i know if that, oh yeah oh good yeah if i watch i watch my kid and if the throw is off i i know i I just know you weren't you weren't uh, planted. Case closed. Uh, this is two of the best defenses in the NFL. I saw the MVP odds. Mm -hmm. uh, they came out, and to me, Lamar has to be up there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what his what where he fit in the uh, the scope. It was you know all the n normal names. It was like you know Burrow, Mahomes, uh, Allen, Hurts, is Allen, Allen is Allen still in there? Yeah, Allen, okay. and, and um, but to me, you know. It's hard for me to say that Miles Garrett is not the most valuable player in the NFL it, or up there. And I know that that doesn't work, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. But Cleveland's been held up by their defense. They've had turnover, you know, quarterback injuries and stuff like that. I'm a little surprised Baltimore's given, you know, 22 and a half points against the Cleveland defense. But they've also been kind of a machine right now. Yeah, right now, Lamar. Lamar is the betting favorite. Along with Hurts and Mahomes. They're okay. tied. And then Tua and Burrow behind him and McCaffrey, Allen, and Lawrence. Quarterbacks win it, but Miles Garrett's been incredible. Baltimore has been a bit of a, like, when you talk about Lamar's fantasy output, it's been Jekyll and Hyde. Mm -hmm. uh, Gus Edwards has been getting into the end zone. That's what he does. Keaton Mitchell, offensive coordinator, came out this week and said he's earned more touches in the offense. I think he absolutely will get them in this game. Yeah. But it's not a good matchup, and so you you're you're looking at Keaton Mitchell, and you are playing the scratchers card, and you get like ten scratches, and if none of them hit, I think you're going to be sad. Yeah, I, I was talking about him on a radio show this morning in a in a gold versus fools gold segment, and I think he is gold that is unmined. You 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 can't put him in your lineup this week, but you want him on your bench. I believe the talent will win out, and he will supplant Justice Hill, but. You know the the Browns right now are they're giving up so few points, so few fantasy points. If you split that three ways between 
Gus Edwards and Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell. I, I, I don't really want to play any of these guys, and it feels a little weird to not start Gus Edwards considering the stretch he's been on. Like, how do you take a guy who's been – the running back six, running back one, running back seven the last three weeks and possibly bench him. But if you have good other options, I am willing, I am personally willing to bench Gus Edwards in this matchup against the Browns. Small update, Brooks is pointing out, Keaton Mitchell was not on the injury report on Wednesday and then he was listed as limited today with a hamstring, which... Or yes, yesterday, Thursday. Or Thursday, thank you, Brooks. And, and Mitchell has uh, had some injury problems already throughout the season. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit of a, a difficult situation for all the running backs on both sides of the ball in this game. Like, Jerome Ford got a ton of snaps last week. I like Jerome Ford moving forward. I don't like him in this game. I like Keaton Mitchell moving forward. I don't like him in this game. Hunt Edwards, very playable moving forward. I mm -hmm. don't like him in this game. Yeah. Um, in fact, you you pointed this out yesterday, Jason, and it hit. You didn't even – it's like, let's not even talk about these options for Carolina's run game because of what they had in front of them. And if you had just avoided it, I mean, Miles Sanders was two for negative five. Yeah. Chuba Hubbard was not worth it. So be careful there. I, uh, I, I would avoid all the running backs in this game. If I had to start one, I would pick Jerome Ford of both teams. Mike, is there a player on the Cleveland Browns on the offensive side that you're confident with this week? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm confident in Amari, Amari Cooper. I know that the, the matchup says – Beware, because the, the Ravens are fourth, schedule adjusted against wide receivers, first against quarterbacks. Uh, but the, the connection with Watson and Amari Cooper has been so strong uh, that I'm willing to put him out there. And uh, and you're avoiding all the wideouts on the Baltimore side. Yeah, it, it, yeah, you have to. It feels like you play Amari Cooper from the Browns. You play mm -hmm. Mark Andrews from the Ravens. Right. You just play the ones. <clears throat> and Lamar, you can throw in there because, you know. You, you will. You do. You, you will. You're going to. And then, otherwise, you probably try to move away from this game. If I was dart throwing with the wideouts, I would dart throw with Odell. Let me just throw that out there. But I yeah. try not to. Like if, no, if I, Odell Beckham or Wandell Robinson. Wandell. Um, I'll go Beckham. All right, quick break. Back with the Falcons-Cardinals, which is actually an interesting matchup to talk about. All right, um, Arthur Sith. <laughs> Arthur Sith. Coming to the desert. If you weren't with us on the footcast yesterday, that name came up for Arthur Smith. The Sith. Arthur <laughs> Sith. You have Everyone's... something against the Sith. Yeah, no, they're the bad guys. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Are they? <laughs> oh, <laughs> get out of here with your nerd stuff. <laughs> Falcons are four and five. Cardinals are one and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Atlanta minus two. The over/under is forty-three. Uh, you know, it's been a while since Atlanta came to Arizona. Kyler was a rookie, twenty nineteen. Kyler's going to start, and that's the that's the exciting storyline from this game. Is we that did we just got breaking news? I'm not going to hit the button, but J head coach Gannon officially said Kyler Murray's going to start. Yeah, the uh, advantage that's led them to a one and eight season has um, he, evaporated. He, he needs to get the clown show out of his personality. The uh, Let me lay out what's going on in Arizona for the rest of the year. This is the moment for Kyler Murray from now until the end of the season to define himself as a professional quarterback for Jonathan Gannon and Monty Austin Fort and the new Cardinals regime and whether he is a fit for what they plan to do because they're going to have a high draft pick. Even if they don't end up with the number one pick, they'll have the ability to move up to one if they wanted to. Like, if they wanted to move on and you want to swap the three or the four and a, and a pick in the future because you feel like you need a, a player that defines your culture, they could do it. Kyler has the rest of the season to prove that, and it changes everything about the Cardinals. The Cardinals were uh, the equivalent of, you know, Bajent and Rippin Farts, uh, which <laughs> you brought up <laughs> early in the week. Uh but now it's Kyler, and that means new life for Hollywood Brown. It means potential for Trey McBride to stay consistent throughout the rest of the season. J James Conner is returning. So my take on this game is that is not there will be moments for Kyler. I do not think it will be a consistent 
game for Kyler Murray. I, there's a lot of rust, 10 months, confidence in the in the knee. He is the kind of quarterback that goes down pretty quick with pressure. Uh, he has been traditionally. I think it's only going to be exacerbated by the knee and, and trying to make sure he doesn't hurt himself again. This It's just a tough situation. And, um, you know, Jason has tremendous confidence this week against Atlanta. I understand it. I am not there. I am not willing to play him this week. But that there you go. I mean, it, you know, Kyler has the weapons and the talent, whether it's on display this week. Mike, I'd love to know your opinion because we've both made our, ours known. For starting Kyler Murray? Yeah, and, and his adjacent, you know, players. The, the players. Um, Hollywood Brown is in for me. Uh, it would take a, a pretty strong option to knock him out of my starting lineup. Um, I'm I'm more on Jason's side of it of that I got Allen Burrow, Dak, Lamar, Herbert, Goff. I have all those guys in front of Kyler, but other than that, I would I would take the chance. Like Brock Purdy is I I like Brock Purdy this week. I'm in agreement. But Brock Purdy is a two twenty five to two fifty and two touchdowns. That's normally what he is. Where Kyler has he could hit ceiling, and if you need ceiling, and I, I think that the risk is worth it. The number one start sit question on our website is Sam Howell or Kyler Murray this week, and Sam Howell is. I would go Kyler. See, I play Sam Howell, and I I would obviously I my place has been well known, and I'm, I'd play Purdy too. I'm on Kyler over both of those guys. Jo Josh Dobbs, if weeks two through seven averaged seventeen point seven fantasy points per game. Kyler is just flat better than Josh Dobbs, and Kyler can run the ball as well. Atlanta schedule adjusted is a really good matchup for running for 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 quarterbacks, but also for mobile quarterbacks, for rushing quarterbacks that have hurt them a lot this season. And I think Kyler's going to run. I mean his his sports book line of rushing in Week One is twenty six and a half rushing yards. That's the kind of expectation right now coming off the injury. So you've got the weapons coming back. James Conner will be out there. Hollywood will be out there. Trey McBride, Michael Wilson. I think in this matchup, you're going to have – this is a home game as well. So you're going to have a fired-up home crowd, and the the kind of energy will be with the Cardinals. So, I mean, that's narrative street, but yeah, Conner's always been good when he's I don't have the confidence the that he's going to run like Josh Jobs was running in his first game back from an ACL. I don't. Right, but if he if he hits just around the, the, the over-under – that is a really nice baseline of, you know, an extra two and a half points just added on to, to the floor. Taylor Heineke on the other side, Bijan, Algier, Drake London back, um, Johnny Smith and Kyle Pitts. I mean, the Atlanta, the Atlanta like situation is <laughs> it's like, you can kind of start them. Yeah. And it's like, we're just stuck in this delusion, right? Like we we're stuck in this place where we're, Logic tells us that something should change. Like he'll get it. Like someone will hit him in the head, and and then he'll he shaved the mustache, man. Yeah, I mean, look, I, he also spent five minutes talking about Tyler Algier being a great goal line back, which he he's a pretty good one. Drake London, I like because there isn't a primary target outside of him this week. You, you're splitting. Like honestly, could any of you say with like? Conviction, which tight end do you think is going to have more fantasy points between Johnny Smith and Kyle Pitts? No, no way. And the Cardinals, uh, under this new coaching staff, have been pretty good against the tight end position, very bad at wide receiver. So Drake London, to me, uh, I know he's your start of the week. I think he's an excellent play. Bijan, you're going to play him? For sure. Algier, because the Cardinals are one of the worst teams against the run, I think he is flex-worthy. I think he's in the Zeke, Devin Singletary category. 100%. This is, uh, this is do the Falcons get inside the five-yard line. If the Falcons get inside the five yard line, then Tyler Algier will have a touchdown. They are also favored. Like they are favored to win the game on the road. And so you'd you'd think that if they got out to a lead, you know, the running game is going to be featured. I don't like Heineke that much because I don't think there's a lot of ceiling. Because as soon as they get a lead, I think he wants to turtle up. So Heineke throwing two touchdowns seems long odds to me. Cardinals would love to give it up. They'd love to give up two to three touchdowns. So maybe he's the dart throw. Yeah, I think that he's a desperation streamer. You never heard that before, Brooks? <clears throat> no, I hadn't heard that. Tur he just asked me if I oh. said, he said, uh, did you just say turtle up? Yeah. Yeah, you never heard of turtling? Yeah. No, guess not. Hide in your shell. Where do you think um, Where do you think that originated, that concept? 
turtling. Of turtling? Yeah, turtling. From the animal? Yeah, I think it originated with the turtle. Yeah. The animal, ha- it has a protective uh, armor. And so you see and when it, 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 and it pulls goes, it, it can like kind of go in. And then it's like, oh, he's protected. He's, oh, he's turtling. He's turtling up. <laughs> That's my guess. Wait, I so mean, I, I, we haven't looked this up. Did tur- you look this a up? A turtle right? can turtle. <laughs> A you, turtle can turn. No, I didn't, didn't look I, it up. I did not confirm. <laughs> I didn't either. I'm of, on it. I'm on son, it. I'll, no, I'll you don't out. need to look it up. Where did turtling <laughs> up originate? Uh, Is tur- the turtle. Turtling. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Just letting you know. And that's actually, it's from turtle.com. Turtling up to go on the defensive. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, Bruce. Yeah. Um, I, for some reason, I feel like that, that language has been used a lot in like, RTS video games and stuff oh, like you're that. Oh, say, you're saying who? That is, yeah, I wasn't okay. asking what a turtle is. <laughs> you guys thought I said, what's a turtle? And then you told me what a turtle was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I know it from from video games. But apparently, I mean, that's been a, 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 a thing for like warfare for a long time. Yeah, makes sense. From the turtle. From, yes. yes we time. look to nature. Look, the master of combat. Uh, I'm the looking at et- etymolo- <laughs> etymology. One is... Uh, from turtle, <laughs> so yeah, that's the that's the order. Thank you. Oh, it is, yeah. It's official. It's official. We got it. Detroit is six and two. They take on the four and four Los Where's, Angeles on, Chargers. Uh, just real quick, Andy, because you have kind of the least confidence in in Kyler's return. Are you playing Trey McBride? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's he's uh, when you don't have an offensive line and you have a guy that that's coming off an ACL and you you have a tight end out there on every single play. Like, I don't even think Trey McBride was that bad last week, and Clayton Toon was the worst player yeah. in the National so, Football League. question, Five Andy. targets, three for 22. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So, question. Are you playing Trey McBride in your DraftKings lineup? Oh, you're trying to deduce. <laughs> yeah. This is Jason's new hobby. He thinks that he can figure out what I'm doing. I'm usually right. Because uh, he wants to pivot to better choices, and so he wants to figure out some of the guys that I've played. So, like... Really low cash option, Trey McBride. You got you're gonna have a super sweet pivot out of that. I uh, I've got a different guy in my Okay. Mind. He's uh a very, very popular start set question right now on the website. Ferguson. Fergalicious or Trey McBride. Ferguson. Ferguson. Okay. Ferguson. Let me make sure my Ferguson's name. a top five tight end over the last three weeks. He's been great. As is Kate Otten. Which yeah. is which, on the back of one, yeah. one monster. You, you game. Can, if you have a two touchdown game, you can backtrack like a month. I mean, was it two? Top five over them. Oh, was yeah. Two? Yeah. It was a great game. Well, I, the reason I even know that is because I was trying to figure out where, yeah, I mean, six targets in back to back weeks. And then, yeah, two touchdowns. Um, I was trying to figure out where Dalton Kincaid kind of slotted in over the mm, last three weeks gotcha. since he's been performing. Detroit six and two. The Chargers are four and four. The game's in Los Angeles. The DK Sportsbook line, Detroit minus three. The over under is. 48 and a half. This is this is nice. This is what I'm looking for. Would you say you <laughs> don't would you say don't, you, would you say you uh, want don't. Do you, I want this game. You want this game. <laughs> oh man. He's back. Yeah. I already gave him the spread, so don't <laughs> ask. Uh Detroit. They get back David Montgomery full practice on Thursday. You should play David Montgomery. Agreed. You mm-hmm. have learned that um even when he doesn't have full practices but he plays, he was really good. Jameer Gibbs, you got to play him. He's been on fire. Both players are very, very relevant, and you have a, you know, a really thin wide receiver room. You know, I know you brought up Josh Reynolds as a sneaky start. There is another side to the coin, and that side is what he did last time out when he played a ton of snaps and was one for thirteen with a fumble uh, for negative points. So, like, other than Amon Ra, you really don't have a lot of confidence in the wideouts. So then you turn to guys like Laporta and you turn to guys like Gibbs and say, hey, this offense is going to run through the most talented players on this team, Monty, Gibbs, Laporta, Brown. I'm kind of less enthusiastic about Josh Reynolds, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm not bullish on Josh Reynolds as like, oh, you got to pick him up and play him. But for a guy that could be on the waiver wire that I think is a fine start. Uh, you know, obviously the last game was very bad, but that was against the Raiders where you run on the Raiders, you don't pass on them. The week prior was the Baltimore Ravens defense. This is a matchup where you target the wide receiver position against the Chargers. So I, I that's where I just think uh, Josh Reynolds should have, you know, 50-plus yards in this game off the waiver wire. Justin Herbert, Jared Goff. 
start him in a game with a good over under. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mike's start of the week was Jared yep. Goff yesterday. Eckler, of course. Keenan, yep. Uh, this is this is the game. This is for huge. This is the game. Now, I'm not saying I'm calling him to to dominate in this game. What I'm saying is this is the game where I will, mm. where I feel like it is a fair, it, it's a fair test to come in, because it's high over under. Detroit's going to put up points. They're going to need to throw the football. They're going to need to score. They're not great against wide receivers. They're not great against wide receivers. And this is the game where like you, like if you slide the paper across and say like, is Quentin Johnson going to make it? I will check the yes or no box after this game. Okay. All this right. is his moment. And we made a bet on the footcast of at least five for 50. Yeah. For yeah. Quentin Johnston. F five for 50. Which was... is a high bar for Quentin Johnston. Yeah. And you and I made that bet. And I said that I thought he'd get there. And you said no. And everything points to no so far in his career. Other than the matchup. This is a good matchup for him. I'm still not going to start him. This is a watch and hope it gets better from your bench. There you go. I don't, I don't think that there's other discussions to be had here. Jamison Williams, do you throw him in a He's, DFS lineup or I I don't. I don't think no, so. I mean, he no. just it this isn't this is it's kind of similar to to Huge except Jamison Williams doesn't get snaps. Like he's disappointing first round wide receiver who the team still only plays on 40% of the snaps. It has been like I don't have I have Detroit winning this game. I don't think the Chargers can score enough. They didn't look good last week. I know it was a tough matchup, but like they have nine total offensive touchdowns since they lost Mike Williams. I don't think it should be underestimated. Like if Huge can't perform, they were getting production out of Joshua Palmer for that brief moment in time. Yeah. Now you have two wide receivers out, mm -hmm. and like Quentin Johnson and Jalen Guyton are not fixing that. Agreed. New York two and seven. To Dallas, five and three. Oh, we've moved to seventeen points. Yeah. Um, so sixteen and a half wasn't enough. So the DK Sportsbook <laughs> line is Dallas minus seventeen and the over under is thirty eight and a half. People have bet it up. They're like sixteen and a half. Easy money. <laughs> I we do we do picks every week here in the studio. And I saw that line and I laughed. And then I selected Dallas. <laughs> so I am part of the the betting it to seventeen. You know, this is tied for the largest spread since Arizona was an 18-point favorite against the Texans in 2021. Um, I expected to hear something out of New York about solutions to their quarterback position. Mm -hmm. Did we hear anything? Nope. Do I, we have I, solutions outside of uh, Tommy DeVito? Danny. Tommy Danny DeVito. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, there are no solutions. And, and even though... They are only, um, what is their implied for, uh, 10, 10, 10. 10. 8. 10. 8 total points over the last month, they would have hit that low a bar only one time. Well, why don't you send them to Dallas and make them play that defense on the road? Yeah, and, and sometimes you can worry about a trap game. For instance, a team like Dallas could go on the road to Arizona and get shellacked. And so you go, okay, you worry about a trap game, about them letting up, but I love that this is a divisional game. Because it's divisional, there's extra juice. You you, you don't really see trap games in division quite so often. Um, I feel like Dallas really wants to send a message to the Giants. Yeah, I mean, the problem here would be, I mean, the Giants' defense has been pretty decent, and Dallas could maybe score less than we hope. From a fantasy perspective, like, but if they if you put the game away on a defensive touchdown and one, you know, whatever it is, one Ferguson catch, you might just be able to yeah. turtle up, yes, and win the ball game and not do like Ceedee Lamb could have a surprise bad game in this. Yeah, game. same same with yeah. Ferguson. Uh, I think both of those guys, based on what they've done, you have to keep starting them. But I'm. You know, I, I, I looked at them in DraftKings lineups, and I was like, no. Because you could see the game script going wrong. That's why Mike started the week, and Tony Pollard, who's been bad, who I've been kind of down on, I, I mean, this should be a get-right game for Tony Pollard. Should be awesome, because you expect when you're a 17-point home favorite, a couple of rushing touchdowns. This, this game, much like Andy was saying about uh, the, holding out the piece of paper, you know, of is that uh, what it is uh, for uh, Pollard? It it will if if Pollard does not come through this week, your confidence is going to plummet or 
No, mine I will. mine will. Mine, it, it, will it will crater. Same thing went through my head when you mentioned Pollard at start of the week. I'm going, well, panic alarm. If if yeah. he can't deliver this week, on the other side it's Saquon and no one. Yeah, and even that is just you better light some prayer candles. I mean, look, if you're down 37 to three in the first half or something, like there'll be plenty of like we've seen it with Devita. Like he'll just dump it off. Uh, he'll be pass rush, dump it off, and Saquon could PPR his way to. He could to value. I I think Saquon's good for double digit points. In oh, one hundred percent. He his floor is ten. He's getting too much work, but his ceiling. He, he's probably going to score between like twelve and sixteen fantasy points and half PPR. Since uh, the injury, seventeen, nine, twelve, fifteen for Saquon. Uh, three of those four were losses. Three of those four were under ten points, and he still delivers. Mm -hmm. um, so at least in that regard, I'm not going to start Wandale. He garbage timed himself a touchdown last week. You have no confidence in the quarterback situation. Ferguson is a must start right now. CeeDee Lamb, of course. CeeDee Lamb has more fantasy points over the last three weeks than any player in fantasy, including yeah. quarterbacks. Wow. CeeDee Lamb has been... CeeDee Lamb's the number one player in fantasy for the last three weeks. He has weeks. taken a huge step. And so, yeah, this one is, is going to be wild. It would. Uh, it's not going to be my almost upset. I'm sorry. I do think Dak will throw two touchdowns. So I think you're really safe with Dak. Washington is four and five. The Seahawks are five and three. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Seattle minus six and a half. The over/under is forty-four and a half. If we want to keep the same refrain going about disappointments, DK Metcalf has not delivered on any of the draft day promises this year. Fantasy finishes over the last four starts: twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-two, forty-six. He had fourteen targets last week. Somehow. That was not double-digit fantasy points. He had four targets last week. So I said that was the week before. Four targets last week, one catch. I don't know what's going on, but I think it has to do with Geno Smith not being a good quarterback right now. Yeah, and, and obviously the, these players have been dealing with injury. Both Lockett and Metcalf have not practiced much. They've you know missed time. Uh, DK missed a game. So something is a little bit broken here, but I do agree that primarily it goes back to Geno Smith. Last year seemed like he... He was the most accurate quarterback in the league last year. Yeah, he, he was awesome. And this year, it's not looking anywhere near as good. However, this is the perfect matchup. Over the last six weeks, you, you've got the Manders who have given up the most points to the quarterback position. Even if you adjust for schedule on the season, they're the 30th best against quarterbacks. They got rid of their pass rush. So this should be a good game. This is why I like Ty Tyler Lockett. I'm Fine with DK Metcalf. I think Geno Smith, even though I traded for Brock Purdy and I would rather, uh, I'm in a must-win scenario and I and Geno scares me, he should, this should be a get-right game for him. It should be. He's at home. It's funny because we're getting Geno this year. The Geno this year, numbers-wise, is what we thought we were getting last year with Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. He is on pace for 19 touchdowns. His wide receiver options are outside the top 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were fine with Jackson, Smith, and Jigba coming to the party if the party was like, you know, it was one you wanted to attend. But now he comes and disrupts 19 touchdowns being distributed amongst his options. That is a much bigger issue. But, yes, you want to put it to the test? At home against Washington, a matchup that is literally the best you could get from quarterbacks and wide receivers, if you don't get it this week, I think you're going to have a, a problem in Seattle. Okay. And you're playing Ken Walker. Uh, as we talked about, are you? What are you doing with Charbonnet? You're just benching him. Bench. He he hasn't gotten enough opportunity. Even the snaps are there. He is not getting the opportunities when he's in the game to be fantasy relevant. So you you can't possibly start him right here. Uh, you can start Brian Robinson. Uh, all the middling options we've talked about, I would start Brian Robinson over all of those guys uh, that we discussed today. This this game. Could end up, I think, being a sneaky, fun back and forth affair with Sam Howell and Geno Smith if they can get the if Geno could get his act together. My only worry here: there is a high probability of rain in this game, uh, but low winds. Wait, a lot of bit rain. A lot of bit rain. Oh, well, a lot of chance. <laughs> a little bit rain. A lot yes, of chance. Exa yes, exactly. Thank you, Mike. A lot of chance. A little bit. A lot yeah. of chance. A little bit rain. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. well said. Um, I agree, though. I mean, McLaurin, Dotson, I think they're both in play. Samuel, um, limited practice. Don't know if he's back out there yet. Logan Thomas was my start of the week at tight end. And away we go. Sunday night football. 
the Jets and, and the Raiders. So Yay. we're like, hey, Thursday Night Football was fun. Let's do this instead. The, like, Zach Wilson, prime time again. The NFL, I feel like they're they're just trolling us now. It's not good. Because they're like – you're going to watch it. <laughs> we'll put whatever we want on prime time and you'll watch it. No, we, we can flex it. <laughs> We're not going to. Yeah, no, we, we don't need to. We're going to leave it. Because guess what? You're going to watch it. You're going to watch it. You know what killed me last night was that it was such a bad game and the refs were horrible. Right. There were flags all the time. Like, if you are the NFL and you're going to get some trash on TV, like, but stop throwing the flags. Yeah, no gotta, one cares. NFL's got to call in down to the field and say, hey, guys, guys, just let them play. Get yeah, this game let's over. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Do not stop the clock ever. Uh, Let them hold because they need to hold so that they can have some offense. Jets Raiders in Las Vegas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is New York minus one. The over-under is 37. And I really like the Raiders in this game. Oh. And I don't feel like I can push a button because the line is minus one. But if the button meant the Raiders win by three or more, I I would be pushing it. I mean, I like the vibe. In Las Vegas, mm -hmm. the like Max Crosby is right there with Miles Garrett is the best defensive player in football. He has wreaked havoc. They played inspired last week. They are great against quarterbacks, and the Jets are bad with their quarterback. Right, the Jets are bad quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you expect <laughs> a lot of uh, interceptions in this game, and right now the strength of you know the the problem with the Raiders has been their offense, but the strength of their offense is the run game especially under um their new head coach they they want they talk about like they want to run the ball as much as they can and that's where the jets defense has been weak the you can't really pass on the jets their their cornerbacks not to the wideouts are no. so good where you, they can't stop the run quite the same so i josh jacobs should have a monster game in this did you guys catch the that's great uh, the interview? Yeah, that's great to hear uh, <laughs> you because you traded him away. Yeah, although I do have him in in our league. So. Uh, Coach Sala was on a radio program and was asked directly, you know, with every all the expectations of this team and what's going on, why do you keep starting Zach Wilson? And his quote was, "I will plead the fifth. We yeah. all knew this was coming. Just oh, everyone but the Jets. No, I mean that 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 quote. Is like to me was is he protecting himself, saying like I'm getting orders? No. So when that I I can't ignore when I saw the quote, that was what I thought. I was like, oh no, it's gonna be like he's he's, he's, saying, he's trying to like, save his I job. want I want to go away, but I'm not allowed. But it didn't seem like that. It was really one of those things where he had kind of answered the question already a couple of times. He just doesn't know how else to say it. He says there's a lot involved, and you know he's just gonna plead the fifth. It was like I can't, I just can't answer. I tweeted last night that we need to invent some more quarterbacks. It shocks me every year that there's like 15 people on earth that can play quarterback at a high level. And we've gotten more backups this year and more of these experiences. I mean, the Zach Wilson, Aiden O'Connell, Sunday night football. I think this, most this people is, thought this was going to be, you know, you want to ask why it's Sunday night. Yeah. This is Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Garoppolo mm -hmm. matchup, not Aiden O'Connell, Zach Wilson. Yeah. And now it is the Jets DST versus the Raiders DST. Yes. And both play them both. Great plays yeah play play the running backs Brees Hall Josh Jacobs mm -hmm. play Garrett play, Wilson Devontae yep, Adams yep I, I I don't want to play Jacoby Myers I think that is bad that's a very bad play <laughs> even though he's been uh significantly better yes than yeah. Devontae Adams for well let, let me just ask you this Mike if you had both season? if you had both on your team and you're and you're putting one into your lineup this week I'm putting in Devontae Adams okay that's but all I'm saying I'm is there and what I'm saying is that is that real? Like, should it just be that easy to throw away what Jacoby has done? I think if we're being honest, there you need to take a hard look at benching both of those players. And it is impossible to bench Devontae Adams because of his name. He hasn't been that great, but that's not the reason you bench him. The reason you bench him is because you have a rookie quarterback in Aiden O'Connell going up against this Jets defense that on average over the course of – the season is basically giving up about 14 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position as a whole. And so maybe all 14 go to Devontae Adams. No, and it's it's very fair. But you're, you're really Devontae's last five games, if you terrible. if you extrapolated it, 
This is a wide receiver that would have 61 receptions on 120 targets, so that's 50%, for 598 yards and no touchdown. Yeah. You're you're desperately hoping you get Keenan Allen's line of 8 for 77 last week against the Jets. It, it, you, yes, yes. And and the truth is we start Garrett Wilson because we believe in the talent and the targets will be there and they come from the worst source. And that's where I'm at with Devontae this week, but I don't. Look, if you have a better option, well, let me, let me, Tyler Lockett. Let me ask. Tyler Lockett's in for me for sure. Christian Kirk is in for me for sure. But let me ask some ones that you go, ooh, I don't do what I really do that. If you had Tank Dell or Devontae Adams, where are you going? I'm going Tank Dell um, if Nico's out. I will go Adams in that one. Calvin Ridley or Devontae Adams. Oh, my gosh. Against the 49ers. Oh, uh, I mean. This is tough, man. This is really tough. I'm going to play Devontae again. Okay, and you'll last, slide that paper across to me see, after six <laughs> six weeks. The, the last one: Marquise Hollywood Brown or Devontae Adams? <sighs> Probably Hollywood. The I will say <laughs> yeah, these are all great questions. the The nice thing about playing Devontae Adams is it's it's not your fault. <laughs> right like, no you're right you're like hey yeah. i I put my superstar yeah. in. he disappointed this is not on me i i didn't do anything wrong no it's that's you. valuable it's you. that's valuable for your mental it's health legit <laughs> advice Legitimate. that's legit advice you don't because if you put him on your bench and you play then john, it's your john dodson and then adams has a couple touchdowns on deep balls because yeah. let's that's on let, you let's remember two games ago he had two bombs a 92-yard yes. touchdown and a 60-yard touchdown that were right there. And if I miss that, that's on me. Yeah. 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 Good point, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to make sure I lose with dignity. <laughs> I'm going right. to win with steel underpants. Oh, All right. Man. That's that's Good. fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Denver, Buffalo, Monday Night Football. The Broncos, 3-5. and five. Buffalo's 5-4. and four. Buffalo minus 7. I'm doing it. Andy's almost upset of the week. <laughs> wow. That's, the, the, that's the reaction the, I needed. On the road. On the road. That's spicy. Buffalo's In been the cold. Buffalo's been weird, man. Buffalo's Windy been a weird game. They've been a weird I team. I don't know if you know this, Jay. Denver's been known to be a pretty cold place. Too. That's fair. <laughs> this this isn't the LA team. Going into the snow. This is a team in Buffalo that won fourteen to nine at home against the Giants. Okay, this is a team that lost to Jacksonville at home. Actually, I think that game was that was might have been overseas. They were technically the home yeah. team, but they've had weird, weird games. And I like what I saw from Denver in their last game. They they're coming off the bye two weeks to prepare for Sean Payton. Javante is looking the part. This is a defense that is not the Buffalo Bills defense of old. The last six weeks, if you look at the schedule-adjusted defense on the course of the season, right, that's usually one of the most valuable things to look at. This is a defense you target. The Broncos have sucked. They're 26th against quarterbacks, 32nd against running backs, 29th against tight ends. That is what Andy's saying is that's not their defense anymore. That was, we talked about it when it happened, that 70-point game against the Miami Dolphins, it skews the season-long numbers. Over the last six weeks, they're the second most difficult matchup for quarterbacks, the second most difficult matchup for wide receivers, top 10 against running backs. Their defense has recovered from the calamity. So, yes, the Broncos' defense has. And yes. I was saying the Bills' defense of old is not there anymore. They give up tons of points to both sides of the ball. They've been one of the worst over the last six weeks. So many injuries. They, they had such a great defense to start the year, and then all their great defensive players got injured. It was, it's really sad. So, look, it doesn't change how you're starting Diggs and Allen and James Cook and, you know, Dalton Kincaid has, has been peppered with targets. I just think that there's higher odds that this is a really good game, and you kind of see it with, I mean, that over-under is 47. That gives uh, the Denver Broncos 20 points in this game and the, and the Bills 27. It's prime time. I, You know, the Bills haven't covered a spread since week four. Wow. So, I mean, you're talking about a weird team right now. Um, and I'm kind of excited for this game. I want to see what happens. I'm trying to give like a post by Olive Branch to the Broncos, okay? Because we have lived in the slums with the Broncos' prognostication 
for a long time, and I I think they might figure some stuff out here. I I, I like what you're saying. Um, I think it would be great for Monday Night Football to have a good game out of this. You've got Cortland Sutton, who's had nine plus fantasy points in all but one game <laughs> of the season. That is. So absurd and shocking. Yeah. It, it feels like Cortland Sutton is the equivalent of the basketball cherry picker. Who You yes. know how they just stay oh, back on defense? Stay, yeah, they don't play D. They're just down there. Throw the ball to him. I just feel like Sutton just stays in the end zone and just waits. <laughs> I'm not moving. Just give me a touch. I don't know how they don't call off sides and stuff. but Well, because he sits out of bounds. Oh, and then steps in? Yeah. Uh, it's, so he tricks the ref. Uh -huh. I mean, I think you can play him. Judy has not been good. I think he is okay in this game. I would play Jerry Judy over Gabe Davis. Oh, let me ask you this. If you had Gabe Davis on your team, ah, Andy, ask would, him for a friend. Would you start him, just generically speaking, do you want to start Gabe Davis this week? No. Mike, do you want to start Gabe Davis this week? A little bit. Okay. A little bit. He's looking uh, for two uh, no's. No, so no, 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 no. He's not. He's, I know what he's doing. Uh, let's go to Deucer's Alley here. Al, would you want to start funny. Gabe Davis this week? No. Brooks, would you want to start Gabe Davis this week? Nope. Rap, would you want to start Gabe Davis this week? Nope. So you freaking fire him up. <laughs> you put him in the lineup. There was a graph. I I, yeah. I don't remember who had this great tweet. Um, it was like the I'll Gabe look, Troll Index or the something. The Gabe Troll Index. If you go to Twitter and search Gabe Troll, you'll find it. Um, it is basically all the games where he's been started in more than 30% of ESPN rosters. His totals were like zero, one point, three points, just absolutely the worst. But all the games that are below that, where he's just not started, he's got like 21. Shout out to at Stat Hall Sports, Jeff Rowe, the there it Gabe is. Davis fantasy football troll of the year resume. Yeah, so people aren't starting him. If he's under 20% started, 21 yeah. points, 15 points, 23 points. If he's up over 30% started, three points, one point, zero points. It's unbelievable. He that is, is he is the troll. He is the troll. So you know he's going to be under 30% started this week. So if you've got but the what's underpants. what's crazy is if everybody gets, right, 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 right. gets that resume. Yeah. We've got a too big an audience. So about half you start them so that we can keep that start percentage under 30%. Wow. All right. Um, Javante, like I said, put him in there. James Cook's not been great fantasy wise he's just around it, it seems like he's more involved than the fantasy points seem to be producing because he doesn't score russ wilson or you know are you, the matchup against buffalo when you glance at it you're like oh i don't want to do that mm -hmm, you're still scared and russell wilson when you glance at him you're like i don't want to do that i put russell wilson into my lineup this week in one of my leagues i did too and to me this is a guy that should be in consideration with like gino and brock purdy this week i think russ could have a game yeah, Russ has been okay. I mean, right now he's the quarterback 15 on the course of the season. He's usually not a top 12 guy. He hasn't had big performances, but he hasn't had more than one flat dud this season. So he's, a, uh, uh, you know, he's been a higher floor, very low ceiling how player. Do you, how do you throw three touchdowns and score under 18 points? You only have 114 <laughs> passing like, yards. That's incredible. Two injury updates before the faceoff. James Conner trending in the right direction. Jamar Chase back at practice again on Friday. Great. Two important players. So, there you go. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. All right, into the faceoff for Week 10. I... I'm looking at the stats over the course of the year. I was last place last week. Mm -hmm. Jason was first. That's right. I'm only Mike first, was second. First or last. That means that through nine weeks, I have finished first, second, and third three times each. Nice. Jason has finished first five times, second zero times, fourth four times. Or third, fourth time. Wait. Third, four times. Four times. And then Mike is sitting at one, six, two. He is almost always in second place. I am executing my strategy to perfection. Yeah. So, look, I'm the loser. I'm laying up. Yeah, I I am. Uh, I can tell you right now, I, I'm, I'm going to be first to last this week. With go my, for it, nah. Just, just I'm going to, I'm going to settle in. Yep, just be comfortable. <laughs> I'm going to approach the green with caution. You know, we should really get him on shamed again, Jason. <laughs> uh, let's All right, it. let's spin the wheel. I need to uh, pay the piper. Wheel of shame. All right, do it. Spin that stupid wheel. 
Spin it. All right. I Spin saw, the wheel. I saw a silly wabbit. I see win $100,000. Rainy day. Um, Dobby Lobby. Oh, toast. To- wait, so toast. I'm toast. A piece toast. Of, I'm a piece of toast? You are toast. <laughs> But I didn't also, know- Mike and I, we basically both won since I was like less than a point <laughs> so, away. So we will also we toast. We are going to toast as well. Mike, hey! have some champagne. Hey, I don't Aww. mind if I do. Careful. Oh, so good. you two are toasting yeah. my we will, we will toast. toast. We're, we're really, we're toasting our greatness. <laughs> what a stupid costume. This is, this is not our best. <laughs> this is, this is a, well, here's. We'll just oh. tell the Foot Clan what happened. You top me off here, brother. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this oh, hey, morning, this- we uh, we hid the, the the champagne and the the wine flutes down under the table, and we got it all prepped, like taking off the foil and the little the little uh, golden thingy that's on top of it. The foil and, is that? Okay, I don't so, know. Yeah, that's yeah. the foil. <laughs> and so we had it sitting down under it's the a turtle, desk, <laughs> just hidden away before the show. Andy's in here, and we're just standing and talking, and all of a sudden, pop. Yeah, and, it and popped. It, it, it ruined the surprise, but I'm still going to... Every time I turn my head, the toast hits the microphone. You look like SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. But he's definitely not. He's definitely not. Honestly, I feel like this is the kind of thing... I could take this on a plane and get a good sleep in. Oh, that's like a nice head pillow. <laughs> it's like a little, like plain toast. All right, into the lineup we go. Enjoy your champagne, gentlemen. Yes, a toast, a toast to us, Jason. Uh, yes. Clink. Yeah, clink. <laughs> clink. All right. All right, I'll, I'll go first. Right. Uh, the toast goes first. My quarterback this week uh, bounced around a bunch of options. I went with a sixty-seven hundred dollar option. All right, Ooh. and I believe that my lineup is going to be very different from your guys' this week. I'm going with Dak. I'm taking the points. All right, Dak at home. Yeah, we are going to have a different lineup. Yeah, I know. Uh, heavily favored. I think I know who Jason started at quarterback. Yeah, uh, but I am taking Dak at sixty-seven hundred. And I believe Jason took Kyler Murray. Oh, you're darn right. I did 5,900 for a quarterback that can put up 20 fantasy points. I will yep. definitely have Kyler Murray in my lineup. And I have Brock Purdy. Nice. At 5,700. So we are live with all of our quarterbacks. I, I had Purdy in for a while. He's cheaper than Kyler, and I think he's a better play than Kyler. I feel like this is the first time all season we've had oh, three no. different quarterbacks. We've, we've, we've had that a Have couple we? times. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, my running backs, uh, You you guys will have to – See if you can know who these players are. <laughs> Andy's not being punished at all. What is this? It's super comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I just like he's just he's relaxing. He's vibing. I am. I'm I'm chilling. Like I want to put my head down. There's a nice pillow. My running backs: <laughs> Christian McCaffrey at 9200. Okay, all right. Alvin Kamara at 8300. Ah, uh, back to the Kamara. Yeah. Okay. We I have two completely different running backs. I have Joe Mixon at 6200. I get against, it. I get uh, it against Houston, and. Going with my guy against the Cardinals, mm. B. John Robinson, only $6,000. I think this is his breakout. I rode with you on that one. So I have B. John for six k, and then I have my start of the week. I got Tony Pollard. So we will be at odds of rooting for touchdowns. Well, let's just throw the flex out real quick then because I got B. John at flex. Oh, okay. All right. oh So man. I have Kamara, McCaffrey, Wait, and B. John. You have – Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my the flex, math does check out. My, my flex is not that good. My flex is Kyle Phillips at oh. three thousand. Oh, that's that's not bad. My flex. I see. Is, he's a, he's your wide receiver. Yeah, because there's no way you putting Christian McCaffrey and all that money in there without being cheap. Uh, my flex is Jackson Smith and Jigba against the Manders at home. How much is four, he? Forty one hundred. All right. My wide receiver room. This is the one that I did a a, a late pivot this morning. Um, I'm actually, uh, for the first time I think ever that I can remember, I don't have a stack with Dak because, um, I'm just, Oh, I get it. I get it. I'm not stacking Dak this week. I have Terry McLaurin against Seattle at 5,800, some guaranteed points at a good price. I have Drake London mm. at 5,500 nice. against okay. Arizona, healthy back at it. Terrible defense. And then I have Kyle Phillips at 3000. So that's how I afforded McCaffrey, Kamara and Robinson. My wide receivers, I think, are my strength this week. I've got Amon Ross St. Brown, who's just been a machine. He's yeah, it's, 80, he's so annoying to play against. 8,300. I've got DeAndre Hopkins yeah. at 6,000. It sucks to have him and Kyle Phillips both 
you know, that was my that was my pivot. I pivoted from Hopkins to McLaurin to not double down on Levis. I get two Titans, huh? Yep, I'm I'm doing it. Uh, And Marquise Hollywood Brown to stack with Kyler at fifty two hundred. All right. Oh man, this this costume is just so uncomfortable. (laughs) Don't ever do this to me again. Yeah, Uh, these are the worst kind of costumes. Uh, Well, double annoyed for you, Andy, then because I'm also playing Amon Ross St. Brown against the Chargers. I have Noah Brown. Against the Bengals, yes, that could be all right. That could be all it right. It could be all right. And then I was waiting on pins and needles. Am I riding alone? I am. Jamar Chase, mm. eighty three hundred. I'm not going to fear the back injury. T Higgins will be out. We're seeing at least ten targets for Chase this week. So my, I'm the only one with Christian McCaffrey, right? Correct. Yes. That, that has worked out well for me in the past. Uh, my final two players, my tight end and my defense, I had to spend bare bones. Um, I am. A big fan of the Tampa matchup. That's why you have Hopkins in there. That's why we have Kyle Phillips in there. And that's why I went Chigga Conquo, who is running a ton of routes right now. Cardio so, King. So I have Chig and Phillips at 3,000 each. So those are basement level. I Wait, hit, so you have two Titans. I have two Titans. Oh. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Uh, a Conquo. And then I have the Cardinals. I have the Cardinals at twenty five hundred. Uh, I don't I get it. I don't like their defense, but I do like Heineke making a mistake. And I mean, you got root for it, man. Yeah, and, and at home, anti Arthur. Yeah, no, totally. Um, I I pivoted to the Cardinals this morning, but I went back away. I have for you the have first Cincinnati time, for the first time this season. I paid up. You paid up for a defense. I paid up for a defense. Four. Did you get Dallas? Thousand. Four hundred. I'm playing the Cowboys. Yeah. Wow. That could be a Giants. problem for us. And I paid up at tight end. So this is the opposite of how I usually build. I've got TJ Hawkinson there for 5,000. Now, should something come out about the snap count or being limited or if he's out with the rib injury, he says he's likely to play. So what's your, my pivot will be the Dr. Schultz. What's your tight end defensive total? Uh, my tight end defensive total is 9,400. Yeah, and I'm at 5,500. All right. Uh, at tight end, I have T. McBee. Got Trey McBride in there for the first game with Kyler. And I have the Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals at home against C.J. Stroud. Was... Love, love Stroud, but when he's on the road against a tough matchup, I have no problem playing against a rookie. That was my favorite cheap option in defense of Cincinnati because they were just, uh, what are they, 2,800 or something? 2,800, correct. These, yeah. these, this feels like the most open, different lineups we've yeah. had uh, or t- in totality. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. That is going to do it for today's show. I got to get out of this super uncomfortable costume you guys put me this, into. This pillow. <laughs> Maybe steal some of that champagne. <laughs> and uh, catch Mike Sunday Live, BallersLive.com before the games. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.